everyone, the moment has finally arrived. Adobe Max 2025 just dropped a wave of incredible updates across the creative cloud. And Adobe Photoshop is leveling up in a big way. In this short video, I'm going to walk you through a few of my absolute favorite new features. The ones that will seriously boost your creative workflow. So guys, I have opened Adobe Photoshop. This is not a, a beta version. This is a general version of Photoshop. So regular version of Photoshop, not a beta version. And I would like to start with a generative upscale. I have opened this image. This image was taken uh, when I was 16 years old. And what I would like to do, I would like to upscale the size of the image. Now this image has a very small size. A look at this. So to upscale, scale this image I will click on image menu and from here I will click on generative upscale now Photoshop opened generative upscale workspace for me what I will do first I will change output scale from 2x to 4x just like that and after that I will click on this looking down arrow next to Firefly upscaler just like that and voila guys yes 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 now we can use partner models in our generative upscale workspace we have two new models generative gigapixel and tapas bloom I'm, I'm sorry tapas gigapixel and tapas bloom Tapas Gigapixel is great when you are working on your photography, when you would like to upscale photography. So because I'm trying to upscale uh, photography, my image, I will specify that I would like to use Tapas Gigapixel, just like that. After I specify Tapas Gigapixel, Generative Upscale work, uh, Workspace shows me the new settings, new option in the settings um, panel, Face Recovery. By default, this Face Recovery option is disabled. If you would like to recover face, and I definitely want to recover my face in this image, I will enable this feature just like that. And now, uh, preview all my settings. Yes, Tapas Gigapixel. I would like to have face recovery and also scale output to 4x. I will click on upscale. And voila, look at this, guys. This is before and this is after. Before and after. This is incredible, guys. This is Wow. And by the, by, by the way, um, new partner models, when they finishing upscaling your image, they will create a separate document. So this is non-destructive way. Now let's talk about this image. This is my painting. I painted a few years ago and I would like to upscale this uh, image. To do so, I will go to image generative upscale and what I would like to do I, will, I would like to switch my model I will switch from tapas gigapixel to tapas bloom why because tapas bloom is great when you're trying to upscale some creative image in my case this is my painting so let's select this model after I selected this model tapas bloom uh, generative upscale shows me a new option in a settings a panel creativity slider if i will move this slider all the way to the left uh, topaz bloom will upscale my image with minimum to no uh, creative details applied to my image if i will move my slider creativity slider all the way to the right uh, generative upscale tapas bloom will upscale my image and will um, add uh, uh, generate cre creative uh, details to my image let's leave uh, creativity volume to 10 and click on upscale 
and voila look at this let me zoom out my document look at this this is before and this is after yes 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 i love all this small creative details topaz bloom applied to my upscale image and once again topaz bloom created a new document for our upscale uh, document in this Photoshop update, now Harmonize is out of beta version and we can find Harmonize in a regular Photoshop. That is amazing. I love, love, love Harmonize and that's why I would like to show you. So I have two images. This is the first image and this is the second image. What I will do, I will select this couch just like that i will copy it and i will paste it inside my first image just like that now using the move tool i will scale size down for this couch image just like that using contextual taskbar i will remove background by clicking on remove background so Photoshop will remove a background around this couch. Now time to reposition the couch in a way I want and you want. Scale size up or down, it's up to you. And when I'm happy, you're happy with everything, with composition, with proportions and everything, in the contextual taskbar, click on harmonize. Just like that, guys. And just like that, Photoshop apply harmonization to my entire document. And by the way, Photoshop created three variations. This is a first variation. This is a second variation. And this is the third variation. You can choose any variation you like. I probably like the third one. And look at this. Photoshop just didn't uh, apply harmonization to the couch, but also Photoshop creates um, this beautiful uh, shadow under the couch and uh, shadow from the couch on the wall. This is before and this is after. Guys, before and after. Look at this. That's why I love, love, love harmoniz harmonization. It's so easy. Uh, harmonization made my compositing workflow in Photoshop so much faster and so much better. Now let's talk about generative fill. So let me show you a few examples. I have two images. First image is this a man and second Im image of uh, this woman. I would like to combine two images together. I would like to uh, add man to this scenery. To do so using the um, any selection tool you like, I will be using rectangular market tool. I will select a uh, part of this man, just like that. I don't need anything more. I will copy it. I will come back to this uh, woman image and I will paste this image, just like that. Using the move tool, I will bring this image on top, just like that. By the way, you can scale size down or up, it doesn't matter. Now, using a uh, uh, rectangle market tool, I will select my entire document, entire document, not some specific layer, entire document. I will click on generative fill just like that. And from here, guys, I will switch model. I will switch model to generative um, Gemini 2.5 nano banana just like that and in my prompt or text area you can name it as you wish i will type just this uh, add the man to the scene standing on the left side of the woman just like that and after that i will click on generate and voila look at this guys <laughs> look at this this is before and this is after and uh gemini preserved original uh from original details from two images look at this that incredible guys let me show you another example so guys i have opened this image with this text and what i would like to do i would like to change word close to opened and I will start with selection brush tool. I will make size of my brush smaller and I will paint on top of my closed 
word and you notice that I'm not careful with person's fingers. I don't care about it. So I roughly uh, selected my uh, closed word and what I will do in the uh, contextual taskbar, I will click on generative field. Now, guys, what I will do, I will switch my generative AI model. I will switch from Gemini to Flux Context Pro, just like that. And I will type, change the text closed. to the text open, just like that. After that, I will click on generate. Voila, guys, look at this. This is before and this is after. Generative AI, in our, ca in our case, Flux Pro, preserve text type and fingers and everything like that. If I would like to change sorry, I can do it as well. I will use same uh, selection brush tool. I will select sorry just like that. I will click on generate a field and I will type change the text sorry to the text VR, just like that. And I will click on generate. And voila, look at this, guys, look at this. Let me show you, let me put all those two layers in the same folder, just like that. And this is before and this is after, so easy. But I'm not done yet. So guys, let me show you another crazy example. Using same selection tool, same selection brush tool, I will paint over the text open, just like that. Look at this, open, just like that. And I'm done. And again, I don't care about her fingers or anything like that. I just painted over the text. In the contextual taskbar, I will make sure that I still have a selected Flux Context Pro. In the prompt area, I will type stylize the text open to the shiny reflection glass. And after that, I will click on generate. Guys, look at this. Guys, just look at this. Oh my God, we even have reflection from her fingers. Look at this, guys. It's incredible. Let me show you before and after. Before and after. That incredible. Now, let me show something mind-blowing. This is image of this uh, new construction. And example, I don't have a drone to fly over, but I would like to preview the uh, building from the above. To do so, to be able to preview this image from above, I will use, uh, um, again, Restangle Market Tool, and I will select my entire document. After that, in the contextual tax bar, I will click on generate a field and I will uh, switch my um, AI model from Flux Context Pro to Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana. And in the um, prompt area, I will type change perspective to the top down. And after that, I will click on generate. And voila, guys, look at this. This is before and this is after. This is incredible, guys, before and after. Look at all these preserved details. Oh, my God, guys, this is incredible. So guys, now I have opened Adobe Photoshop a beta. And what I would like to show you, I would like to show you new improvement remove a tool. What I would like to do, I would like to remove this pizza stand and people uh, from this scenery. To do so, I will switch to a remove tool. 
in the options bar, guys, I will specify that I don't need a uh, remove after each stroke option enabled. So I disable this option, but I would like to create a new layer. So I will enable this option. Now, when Photoshop using the remove tool will remove areas I will specify, Photoshop will create a new layer. Yes, I know this is incredibly awesome. So now using the remove tool, let's select this uh, pizza stand just like that. Nothing is too complicated. This is super easy. And bringing size of my um, brush uh, down, I will select other people. I will just paint over them and I will paint over this uh, person as well. After I'm happy with everything, i double check um, if everything is selected. I mean, uh, what I wanted to remove is everything selected. I will click on OK. And voila, guys, a look at this. This is before and this is after. Also, in Adobe Photoshop Beta, we have updated generative field expand a model. Let me show you. So what I would like to do, I would like to expand this image I took in Iceland. To do so, I will switch to the remove, uh, to the uh, crop tool and I will expand my canvas to the right and to the bottom, just like that. After that, I will click in a contextual taskbar. I will click on generative expand I will leave my prompt area empty. I will type nothing, but oh, what I will do, I will click on this Firefly icon. And now I have few more choices. So what I will do, I will switch on Firefly fill and expand. After I specified this model, I will click on generate and look at this. So generative expand, expanded area I specified and generated three different uh, variations. I like the third one. Look at this. So guys, this is uh, what I wanted to share with you today. Of course, I will record, record more tutorials, more videos targeting some specific features. This is only for today. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all your support. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. I'm here to answer all your questions. Thank you so much. And I will see you very soon. Bye.